Hi everyone, today we're answering a Reddit question. Check it out. So successful text 1432 is asking, how do I make the organic roof off my drawing? And you can see they've already got a model started over here. Uh, they got a little plan drawing and they have a nice sketch showing exactly what their design intent is, which is great. Now my gut tells me sub D is the way to go in order to make this. Okay, but how do we get a sub D model starting with something like this? So I have something started over here. If you want to download the files, go ahead, use the link below this video. You can download that and get access to my free training, 20 tips to model twice as fast in Rhino and Grasshopper with a whole bunch of extra bonuses. But let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you how to do this. So essentially what I've done is I've just taken that plan drawing that you had seen that looks like this. Okay, from Reddit, just pasted it in here, made it around the right scale, and then just sketched over it. So what I have is a bunch of curves, and then I've just extruded them. You know, just, it, this is a sketch, right? So we don't have to be super accurate. And what I noticed in the drawing is that the roof kind of overhangs a little bit. So what I've done is just made a little offset on that curve. So how do we actually get started with sub D if you're starting to look at something like this? If you look at the sub D menu, there's really no obvious way to start. And honestly, don't even start there. Start in, on the Rhino side. So this is, this is how I would do it, okay? I would just start with a nice flat roof and then use sub D to kind of build that up. So what does that mean? First, we need a like curve for that roof to build a surface, right? So let's go ahead and just look at the curves. So if I take the walls off and I'm just looking at the curves, this is what I have, okay? Um, I need the roof curve. So I'm gonna take the walls and just hide them for a second. And you'll see there's no actual single curve that is the roof, right? Because the way I've drawn it, at least this kind of terminates here at the circle. Uh, so I'm gonna use a command called curve boolean. Okay, so first let me just make a new layer in here. Okay, curve and I'll say roof outline or something like that. Okay, make that my active layer and then go ahead and type in curve boolean. So curve boolean is a good command and all it does is you have to click in the area that you want a new set of curves to be built based on the boundaries of the curves that you've selected. So for example, if I click here, you'll see that's exactly what I need. This is precisely where I want the roof to be. Okay, and you can see over here, it says output. It says curves, you can do output as surfaces. And now when I hit enter, boom, there's a surface created there. So technically this shouldn't say roof outline, this should say uh, you know, surface roof outline or something. There we go. And that's my roof, right? But right now it's on the bottom, right? So if I show everything and show my walls again, yeah, the roof's at the bottom. So let's move it up. That's easy. So move vertical from here to here. And now my roof is in the right location. It looks terrible, but that's okay. We'll work on it. Okay. What's the next step? This is key, okay? I like to use a command called quad remesh, but before you use quad remesh, you wanna get all your geometry ready. What do I mean by that? So for example, I know that looking at that sketch, the, I'm gonna call these gardens, okay? These gardens kinda of like, they dip in, right? So I want the, the part that's vertical as well as the part that's like horizontal to be part of this geometry that I'm gonna use. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna make a new one called um, like quad remesh and I'll just say pre quad remesh just for the purpose of the tutorial you understand what's came before and what comes after and I'm going to copy a couple of things over here okay I'm also going to make it a different color so I know I'm working with the right geometry so I'll make it orange and I'll take the roof and the vertical faces of these walls and just copy them over here okay so they're copied there and now I can turn the walls off and the roof outline thing off and you'll see that I'm left now just with the curves at the bottom and these. So I'm also gonna just hide those curves. I don't need those curves. Let's just look at what we have. We have four different surfaces. So I'm gonna join them, just select them all and join. And now you see you have a poly surface that looks like this. Okay, this is the pre part, right? So now I'm gonna just duplicate this one because it's always good to save the geometry before you do a major command like quad remesh or something or a Boolean operation. It's always good to save the originals. So duplicate layer and objects. And in this time, I'm just gonna take the word pre out, right? Surface quad remesh. And I may not even call it surface anymore. We'll see in one second if that's true or not. So I'll make the new one my current layer or active layer, uh, turn the old one off and so now I just see this one. And let's go ahead and run that command. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about, why it's so useful. Okay, quad remesh. All right, type quad remesh, and you start to see this 
bake table and now you're wondering, okay, what do I do with this window? Don't worry about it. Uh, first thing you want to do is come down here and just make sure that convert to sub D is checked. Okay, convert to sub D and you'll see that nothing happens. So you want to see what is the sub D that you're going to make from this geometry. You want to click on preview. Okay, check preview. And you'll see that something is happening on my screen, but it's kind of hard to see because they're overlapping. So what you want to do is hide the input, which is the orange original surfaces. Let's hide those. Okay. And now you start to see, you know, hey, it's going to turn what I gave it as the input into this sub D. If you like this, that's great. Your screen is going to be a little bit different from mine. Okay. Uh, yours may be a lot more intense. So if I put this up to 2000, uh, you may have something that looks like this. You could do this, but honestly, it's very, very difficult to manipulate something with this many faces on it. I would start small and then subdivide as you go. So, uh, you know, you can either choose the length, like if you know, you know, the target length, oh, this is going to take a while now. Um, yeah, that's too heavy, right? Let's say 15 feet in my case, right? I'm modeling in feet and maybe you're like, oh, that's okay. 25 feet. And this way, at least like, you know, if you have an idea of the scale of your model, you can kind of model it this way. I'm going to leave it at this 25 feet, hide input objects, and you can delete the input object now if you want. Why? Because we actually saved the input in another layer, right? So I think that's okay. I'm going to click okay. And there it makes this nice sub D for us over here. So a couple of things I'm going to do first, it's kind of hard to see on my screen. So I'm going to change this back to black. And if I ever made an error or a mistake in this again, I can always go back to the original and go ahead and quad remesh it. Okay. One thing I like to do after I do a quad remesh is kind of save the settings a little bit. So for example, first of all, I'll call this a sub D since it's no longer just a surface or a poly surface. And then after this, I'll just put 25 feet. So this way I remember like, Hey, when I made this sub D, what were my settings? And mostly I keep the settings pretty much similar. Uh, the main thing that changes is how many faces you're going to have on there. Okay. So sub D, 25 faces. Now, how do we actually use this and create our project from it? So if I bring the walls back in, for example, now you start to see some scale. I can lock the walls so I know I'm not going to mess with those. And let's go ahead and grab the sub D and start moving it around and doing some stuff. Now, what you can do, something to keep in mind, actually, I'll turn the walls off for now just so we can focus on some sub D work. Um, uh, what I like about sub D is like on a sketch level, it's really great to be able to iterate through ideas. Okay. So for example, uh, you know, using the gumball, make sure the gumball is on. Okay. I can go move this up. I can hold down control and shift and select the edge. And if I double click the edge and if it finds a loop, it'll select the whole loop. So let's try. Yep. I double click found the entire loop and let's see what I can do. I can actually drag that down. And now this is what my shape looks like, right? A lot cleaner, a lot smoother. But here's the great thing about sub D is that you can just keep endlessly manipulating this. Okay. So for example, uh, you know, on a project like this, you probably want to make certain selections. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So for example, let's call this garden one, right? If I hold down control and shift and select all this, you can actually save this as a selection. Um, in my case, I'm actually only going to select the faces. So if you go to the sub D, tab up here. What's a really good one to use is this little icon here, which is basically a filter for faces. Notice as my mouse moves around, it's not really selecting anything yet. And if I hold on control and shift, I can select a face. I can select an edge. I can select a vertex vertex. And those are all great, right? But sometimes you only want to select faces. So I'll just click this. And now notice as I move my mouse, I'm not clicking on anything. Uh, the mouse just highlights faces. So that's great. And if you ever want to disable that, just come back here and right click on it and it'll disable that feature. I'm going to turn it back on. And this time I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these faces. Notice I didn't have to hold down control shift. I just went ahead and selected them. And what's nice is that I can come here to name selections. If you don't have name selections, go ahead and turn that on. Okay. So, oh, sorry. One more time. Go select those. And under name selections, I'm going to call this, you know, a uh, garden one. Okay. Garden one small, I don't know, call it something. Right. And that way, if you deselect it and you're working on some other stuff and you want to come back to this one, you can just go ahead and click that and it'll 
select it for you, which is pretty awesome, right? Let's uh, maybe that's a little bit lower, right? Something like that. Um, maybe the garden on the inside, oh, sorry, this part is much more smaller. Let's say you want to change its scale. Oh, again, what's a really great thing to do is you can select loops in sub D. So if I select one and notice there's one next to it in this direction and this direction, right? If I go ahead and hold down shift, which would just select the next one, but I don't want to go and hold down shift for all of them to select the loop. You can select one and then while you're holding shift, instead of just single clicking, if you double click, it'll actually find the full loop for you. And what's nice about this is because you have the gumball on, I can go ahead and just scale that, or I can hold down shift and scale it in both directions. And this way I can make that a little bit smaller. I can uh, you know, do the same thing for the edges here. So if I deselect that, select one edge, and then double click the adjacent edge, I can go ahead and drop that down real low. You know, and start doing manipulations like that. It's, it's, it's really useful. And so you can easily make quick selections like that, either on faces or on multiple parts of this geometry and start to mess with it. Okay, so again, like really quick, you can just select both of these. Um, you can also, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't thicken this mesh yet until you do have the final form. Um, now, one more thing is I notice in your sketch, you have this little like stairway going down and you're probably wondering, okay, how do I do that? I wish in sub D there was a way you could just unjoin an edge because that would make my life so much easier. Uh, let's say these faces, if I select faces again, uh, like some of these faces actually go down, right? The problem is if I select, let's say these and I move them down, you know, it's still connected here. I need it to disconnect, right? So there's no easy way to do that. So let me show you one trick that I tend to use in order to help me out over here is you can try to use subdivide or sometimes you can insert an edge. Uh, let me show you why. Like for example, if I want to delete, if uh, you know the easiest way to disconnect that is to delete this face. You see, if I delete that face, then these open up and I can use them. But sometimes you don't want such a giant impact in your model. You want that impact to be more minimal. So you can go ahead and either subdivide this. So the icon for that is, da, 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 there it is, subdivide. And you see that it took that one face and split it into four. And I can do the same for say these two, subdivide these again. And then if I hold down shift and hold these and delete, you know, that's a much smaller cut now. You see, instead of it being this giant block that was taken out because your sub D faces are so large, you can subdivide them, remove a smaller bit, and then you can always merge the other ones back again. Okay, so for example, if you want to merge these ones now, uh, of course, as I'm trying to show it live, I'm going to, you know, not find it. There, merge those. Merge those, by the way, it was this icon up here with a little X in it, which doesn't make sense that it's an X, but whatever. Um, and then you could merge these back if you want. So it's kind of like subdividing it, doing some work, and then go trying to get back to the original, you know? So that's how I would try and like create a little split in the model. A um, couple of other things I, I would just want to cover is, you know, if I select these, for example, and just start bringing them down, Okay, that's great. It's not exactly what you want. Um, notice no matter which face I select, the gumball is the same, right? And that's because if I click this little icon over here, you'll see that it's assigned to the world axis. So up is always up, left is always left, and the X and Y and Z are the same as the world, right? But when you're dealing with sub D, my recommendation is sometimes you may want to switch to object. And what that does is when you now select a face, notice that you're going to go normal to the face. Okay, you're not going up as in the world up, you're going normal to the face. And it doesn't matter which face it is, right? Like this face is more up and down like normal, but this face is going to be in the direction of that face, which is really great because sometimes you just want to move that face in its own direction, in its own plane, uh, which makes a lot more sense at times, right? Uh, now, so with some of these, you may want to straighten them out. And again, if you're just working in a sketch, that's okay, right? Um, 
and then this kind of simulates that kind of stair that you want to go down and that's all right now if you want it to be a little bit more accurate and you're like you know what i don't want this to be wonky at all i really need it to be perfect you know i really like this mode as well of working in sub d which is toggle sub d display which turns your sub d into basically the facets that are coming together to create it. It's basically what is the quad mesh or so that's making this sub D. And what's nice about that is, oh, I'm still selecting faces. Let me turn that off and just do solid points on. Now that for me, that's F10, but the command is uh, points on. Okay, really great. And what that does is actually just helps you see these points. And so I can just select one, two, three, four, five. Don't select that, just select the points. Thank you. And then I can use something like set points and just make them all have the same Z and you know just place it somewhere there. And so now all those points you can see are all just perfectly flat, right? And now when you toggle back, you may realize like, hey, that actually looks a lot better. You know, so you have some level of control here. I'd recommend you just go ahead and try and mess around with sub D a little bit. And if you want some higher fidelity to get to the original part, the key really lies in that first thing that you build, right? Like for example, this is what we build at first, right? Uh, and this is what came out of it. So, uh, you know, depending on what you start with, you can have a higher fidelity of what you're building here. So the more you work on this before you quad remesh, it might help you. Again, play around with it, try it out. I think it's the way to go. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions or comments or such, leave them in the comments below. And I hope this video helped you out. If you did, just give it a like so the algorithm helps me out and helps you find more videos like this as well. If you have any other Reddit questions or anything like that, go ahead and drop them down there as well and I can make a tutorial for you. I'll see you all next time.